my.kuka is the site where you can get all the help you need and also register your assets have a look at your products your use cases your licenses and your trainings and a whole lot of other stuff but let's get started you get to my.kuka by going to the website my.kuka.com where you can either log in if you are already registered or you can register a new account and to do that you press the button which says not a member where you then create a new account and then you get this is something that happens in two stages so the first stage you enter your email and uh, suggest a password where you fill in your first and last name and your email and this is then sent in and you will get a validation email in return to that email you entered and in the second stage you then get to select the account if you are registered to an existing company account or if there is a completely new company that's needed to register inside typically if you have been in contact with Kuka before there should be your, your company should be registered as an account and after that is successful and validated with that account you will get access to my.kuka and instead of me showing a lot of different powerpoints let's dive right into my.kuka and i think you now see the login screen i showed you before and i will now log in as a demo user and if all goes well we are in allowed into my.kuka it is a slow internet this morning it seems so right now we're in and i've logged logged in as a system partner so there are two levels of login is one of our system partner or as any other customer and a little bit differs but what i'm going to go through today counts for all customers so you get the welcome screen like you show see right now and the first thing that pops up is that if you like to test our new kuka sim 4 the new version of our simulation software you can actually get a test trial for 30 days by clicking on this button here where you get the product key here the temporary product key and you can download the software from here that will give you a 30-day license to test kuka sim 4. going back we can see that the layout of this website is divided in some main parts First of all, you get news. Here you will continuously find some product news and some interesting application news, uh, whom other customers have done, which can act as an inspiration and as a help in finding your possible applications. Then you see the features and under news and events, it's the same which ends up here. The only difference is that we get it in an expanded view so i have a longer history of news to look at right here if we go back again and scroll down again there is a product and service data page and a market page and i will shortly get back to you to that but there is also a personal content which is different for every one of you users first of all there is my assets on this page we can 
register our products by entering the serial number of our product or assets, it is called. And an asset can be either a robot or a controller. And as you see here are some, someone tried to register some robots. And this is said is, please contact KUKA because someone has entered just a dummy number. This morning I registered one of our robots in the tech center and it's now being verified by KUKA centrally and it will show up here instead. Once the robot is registered in a proper way, you can find here in the furthermost list that I want to search for documentation or spare parts for this type of robot and it will filter depending on your assets. You can, if and when you have registered products, you can use this field to the right here to filter for documentation or spare parts for that specific robot types. That will save you a lot of time in our marketplace where you can order spare parts and softwares directly online if you like. If you want to register a new product, you just click this button here. You enter the serial number. You choose what type of asset this is. It could be a robot controller or a linear unit. And then press register my asset. And you will get a confirmation mail. Once this has been confirmed by Kokia, and you will find it in your assets. If we go back a little bit and have a look at my support, any cases, support cases you might have wasted by KUKA will show here. And please pay special attention to this part here, where there is a filtering uh, function, which right now says that my.kuka open cases. I have no, at the time being, no open cases. But here you can also have a look at the closed cases. And in this case, there has been a case that been closed. And that's this. You see the case number here. And by clicking on it, I can see the complete history of this case. Now, this is a little bit poor example because this is one of my French colleagues who has made this demonstration. But we can also here start entering new information about the, if this is an ongoing file uh, case, I can now communicate with our support department through here by adding comments, adding files and so on to the case. And hereby you get a complete documentation of what has been happening and what has not been happening in the case, so you can follow it closely. And of course, you can also register a completely new case by, on my support, clicking this button, create a case, and then you just fill in your information here. So this is a very fast and convenient way of, for you to both create new support cases or follow your ongoing or old support cases. Uh, if you attend any training at the KUKA College, that will also be documented and you can find it here. Now, this demo user has not been through any trainings, obviously, but you can also have a look at by searching for the training, whatever type, and get the training schedules this way. And when you go into the KUKA learning portal, 
you will find something that's my training and you can see get a list of the trainings you have possibly attended or you can browse the training catalog this will open the KUKA college you choose a country defaults will ch be chosen and then you will find the programming uh, the training courses catalog there. If we go back once again, we have on under your personal content, my licenses. So if you have bought KUKA licenses like this, they will be listed here. And Let's take this, for example, this demo user has bought a KUKA SIM Pro 3.1 license at some point. You can now manage this license here by editing it and not like that, but let's take one of the others then. And that is not up to speed today it seems normally we can transfer licenses here between users since i'm logged on as a demo user i cannot do it from here but you can here it will say whom it's registered to and we can then transfer the license to a colleague here if you like so hereby we can handle our licenses in this way So that was pretty much it regarding what can be found under my personal content. So let's have a look at the newest feature here, which is Marketplace. Here on the Marketplace, I can order spare parts or softwares for my robots directly. And we actually have a campaign right now also that if you do it online here, you get an additional 3% discount on the spare parts. So by clicking shop.now, it moves us to the spare parts. And here we can either I know the article number for the robot or the cabinet or whatever I'm looking for. And then I can just enter it once the page has loaded. For some reason, it's very slow this morning. Not so sure why. But let's wait a few seconds. A few seconds more. Or we can choose directly here and I'll choose to go to components and say in this case then I want to view all components. And here we get the components by category. And let's say I am looking for a some part of the kinetic system. I can then browse and continue to browse here. And now I have it done a selection. I can also directly search for a an article number like that, this. In this case, it was a smart pad, an older smart pad. And you will get it directly here. With the list price, you can go into it and either order it no or either order it as a repair exchange part. You can see if it is in stock or not. And hereby quickly get also the basic data and the technical data for this part here. Now, again, when you have an asset registered to your account, like a robot or a controller, 
you don't have to search the way I did right now. You can then from my assets choose to search for documentation or spare parts and my.cokia will automatically filter the information according to that uh, product. So that is a fast and convenient way of searching for products which you need for your product, uh, robot or controller. If we now quickly, and you can then also, of course, follow your order here. You can see your order history and the status of the order. If we now look at product and service data, we can here find quite a lot of information regarding our products. And if you are one of our system partners, you can actually write already here, see what is the current delivery times for the different robot types. As you see, we have still in these times reasonably short delivery times with one or a few exceptions. But most are still quite uh, acceptable. If we go back, we can also find the product information area. Which hopefully loads quicker than this normally. Where I can find information around any robot or any component for that matter in our product catalog. And you see here in the top row, we have some filtering on what type of component I'm looking for right now. And let's say I am right now interested in a robot that I can choose. Okay, I am interested in a Cybertech robot, a Cybertech nano robot, for example. Then it will list all the actual and active Cybertech nano robots. You can see that I can also, if I like, display the discontinued products. Then we will get a few more. Uh, products than that. And if and when I go into a product, let's take uh, let's take this one, a welding robot, for example, you get some picture and the article number for the robot. And if you wait a few seconds, you get the basic data, the data sheet, if you like, for that robot. There is a download page here where you can find product presentation, product brochures, specifications, and even the step files or data uh, CAD files for the product. And if you look at the symbol, to the right, there's a download link for, for example, the product presentation in PDF format, or in some cases, there is a link instead. So for example, for the step file here, I would have to press the link and automatically our product support page will open, which has the same login as my.kuka for you and you will get directly to that download link. For that, in this case, it was a step file, you see here. And here is the step file we chose, and I can now choose to download it. So it's now started to download to my computer. 
So this is also a very easy and convenient way to find documentation, manuals, and so on by following these links to KUKA Expert, and it will give you all the documentation you need for that product. Now, finally here, there is also one way here of finding the spare parts for this product. So by going this way, I'm now filtering out spare parts, which are relative for this specific product. As you see, I now get those filtered directly here. So this is another way of filtering the products, spare part products for that robot. Before we quit for the day, there is one more point I would like to point out uh, in my.coca, which are there for your assistance. And that is the KUKA robot selector, you call it. It was called KUKA Compose before. But this is a robot selection and load verification tool, free to use for everyone where I can choose from a number of our robot in our product range. Either I'd want to know what products we are talking about, or I can also specify a range of uh, robots. Let's say I want to have a robot which has a payload between 20 and 35 kilos. I want it as a standard robot, I have no special. And as you see here on the right side, it will filter the robots which are suitable for that type of payloads. I will now, and I can now take a few of them here and say run analysis. And since I chose three robots, I can choose which one should be the first hand option in my case, but it will still analyze all three robots. I can now put in the load data for my load here. So default, it has put the maximum value here. And as you see, therefore it has already here deselected the other robots. So let's bring the payload down a bit. Let's say I have a payload which is, for sake of argument, 18 kilos. As soon as I change anything, it will be updated here, as you see. Now the load is probably offset with something from the change, from the uh, flange of the robot. So let's do a distance offset of the center of gravity for this load. And right now we actually see that by doing that, we have now overloaded the KR20 a little bit. And we can now look at the diagram and see it has a static load for the KR20, which the purple one is a bit overloaded. We can also have a look at the dynamic loads, which are still the same, or uh, still okay. We could uh, then possibly also enter some inertia to our load. And my figures are right now probably a bit low. So it doesn't really make that big difference. Let's try to increase it a little bit. And depending on this will move and the dynamic loads will update. And you see now that since I've changed the inertia of my load, two of them are now overloaded 
where the 22 one is statically okay, but from a dynamic point of view, overloaded because of the high inertia of uh, my load. So I'll change them back down. And it is still overloaded dynamically. And let's say we have now done, constructed a lighter two, but from a dynamic point of view, we are still overloaded. With the lower inertia, this looks quite okay. We can also do some supplementary payload data. That means that on the axis of the robot, there is a possibility that I have connection boxes and so on. So I can point out where these are fitted on the robot to do a complete and relevant load data and add that. And once this is done, I can now push down here in the right hand corner an export report. And now a written report, which I can now save in my project documentation. I'll just bring it up and make sure that you can see it. Uh, let's see which one I should show you. Or can you see it already? You get a fully documented load report with the data we have inputted and whether it's approved or not to save to your project documentation. This is a fast and easy way at the beginning of a project to make sure that I have a properly selected robot, which will handle the payload I'm looking at. So let's get back to the COCA Compose page, where I was here, and go back to my my.coca. So this is an important and very practical way of checking your robot applications. Before we leave today, if we roll down, there is actually a my.kuka getting started page as well, which looks like this, with a lot of online videos showing the KUKA, my.KUKA training, how to handle marketplace, for example, how to add products, how to select a robot I need, if, you for, if and when you forget what I have just shown you. And with this, I have basically come to the end of my presentation today. Industrial Intelligence.